I have been wanting to get away from Sony glass for a while now. Now there's two direct reasons for this. Lenses have come so far in terms of advancements, making them very sharp. They are clinically sharp where it is just getting kind of boring. There's just no character left in them. The other thing is that I found that autofocus, specifically in the two cameras that I use, the Sony FX6 and A7S III, is so good that I rely on it too much. It kind of takes away some of the creativity of filmmaking because the camera is telling the viewer what to watch and not me. So in this video, I'm gonna be going over why I decided to choose the Nikon AI lenses, like Nikon, really, I know, how I cinemodded these to work with my FX6, but also my film cameras, pros and cons of these lenses, some of the results I got, and then my overall conclusion is to if I made a good purchasing decision. In January, my girlfriend's mom gifted me her Nikon FM2 with the Nikon 28 F28 AI lens that she had, she was gifted from a friend that she was never using. I fell in love with this camera immediately. The tactile feel, the way that it functioned, the manual film, shooting photography experience is just something that I really love and it's one of my new favorite like creative hobbies. I really like film photography. But what really caught me by surprise is how much I like these vintage Nikon products, the camera and the lenses in particular. So I took the lens and I bought an F to E mount converter and I put it on my FX6 to see if I would like that as a vintage lens look. And I was absolutely blown away by how sharp, how nice characteristics, kind of the softness. My reasoning for going with the Nikon AI lenses in particular is because they serve dual purpose for me. I now have two Nikon film cameras and I can adapt these as well to my Sony Cinema camera and my A7S III like I am right now. By the way, a little disclaimer, I'm shooting on my A7S III, but it has the Nikon 24 millimeter F28 with a 1 8 black promist and then an ND filter on it to cut some of the light. So I already had the 28 millimeter and on Kijiji, which is like our local classifieds, I found a Nikon 50 millimeter F2 and a this lens that I'm using, the 24 F28. It also came with a Nikon EM film camera, which is awesome. And this this only costs $200 Canadian. So I don't know, like 20 bucks American. I don't know what that is. I then found a really weird focal length. It's a 43 to 86 millimeter F38. I'm pretty sure that's what it is at a local camera shop. I actually really like this lens. It's unique, it's weird. It's not the best out of the lenses that I got. So I wanted to cine mod these to use on my FX6 and A7S III. To do so, I ordered follow focus gears from followfocusgears.com. I'm really happy with my experience with them. It was a little expensive with shipping and I had to pay in US. So for Canadians, there's gotta be a better option option, but I was really happy with the quality of the product, the way that it fit. They almost fit perfectly aside from the 43 to 86. I needed to put some gaff tape in there and then it was snug, like super good fit. And I didn't have to heat them up or anything. Really happy with those. I then got 52 millimeter to 67 millimeter step up rings because I also bought 67 millimeter caps. So there's caps across the whole lineup. It was super cheap and affordable to kind of cine mod these. I actually kept the F mount because I want to use it on my film cameras. A lot of people convert these to E mount and there's kits to do so. So if you want to do that, you can do that, which is awesome. A lot of people also de-click the aperture. So now I want to talk about some of the pros and some of the things that I'm really happy about and the reasons that actually drew me to these lenses and have drawn me to want to purchase more. So one of the pros is there is a ton of them on the market. Nikon made a ton of this glass because it was very popular in the professional film photography market. So there's still a lot of it in really good condition floating around like I found on Kijiji. It's also really affordable even compared to like the Zeiss contacts. The Leica R's are very expensive now. These lenses were so affordable. I got two for 200 bucks. I got one for 50 bucks. That being said, these are not the cream of the crop Nikon AI, AIS lenses. They are, you know, F2, not F14. I'm going to invest in some better lenses, but I thought this was a really affordable way to test out and see if I like them first. The build quality of these lenses is really nice. It has a very metal tactile feel. All the lenses, the focus throws on the AI versions in particular. I, I, I would recommend the AI versions because they're cheaper for no reason, unless you're shooting film photography. AIS is something that has to do with the, I think the exposure on film, auto film photography cameras. We get the AI because they have a really nice long throw, which is good for pulling focus. I don't think that they're weather sealed. So that might be a problem for some photographers and filmmakers. If they want weather sealed gear, it's not really a deal breaker for me. I'm not gonna be shooting in the rain anytime soon. Another thing is they're really small and they all have a 52 millimeter front diameter. I'm, I'm almost positive all the ones that I had were. So it's very easy to cine mod these to different thread diameters. So it's another thing to keep in mind. And they're just small, they fit in the camera bags super easily. I love the different markings when it comes to the aperture, the different colors. I had a lot of people tell me that these are super sharp lenses. The 28 in particular, I found to be very sharp, like clinically sharp, but it still had some characteristics to it. Softness around the edges. I'm not a pixel peeper, pixel peeper in particular. I, I don't like take the image, go into Lightroom, zoom in, see all the imperfections, the chromatic aberration. I actually like a little bit these characteristics. I just like looking at the overall end video result that I get from the lenses and I'm very happy about that. 
Skin tones are nice and soft. When I need it, if I stop down a little bit, they're very sharp. They have almost a bit of a cool look to them to me. They're, they're not warm. Uh, I don't know if this is just the circumstances I've tested them in. They haven't been extremely extensively tested yet, but I really like them. And I also, I love the way that these flare when the sun hits them. They do lose a bit of contrast and get soft, I found, but the flares that they produce, sp specifically with this 24, which you could kind of actually see right here, I just noticed. It, it, it's a bit more pronounced if the sun's like looking at it, but I just, I really like the way these flare compared to a traditional new clinical photo lens from Sony or something like that. They just have, they have a really nice unique look to them. Overall, I'm extremely happy with these lenses. I kind of wish I had just invested in some of the more expensive versions from the get-go, but I think it was a really good experiment to see if I like the lenses or not. And I'm happy with these lenses, hands down. I'd like to get some faster primes out of the series. So like a 50, an 85, a 30, all around 1418. I think that's going to be really nice, non-AI or AI. I really want to get the, I think it's the 105 F2.5. That is a very famous lens. It was used to photograph the Afghan girl, which is a very famous photo. There's a lot of cool lenses that you could buy in this set and they all match nicely. They all look nicely and I'm, I'm really happy. Now, if I'm being honest, I still wanna get some cinema glass. I really like the look of the SLR Magics. I know they have a little bit of focus breathing. They offered me a really nice discount code to review them on my channel, so I might hop on that. If you're interested into knowing what my favorite Sony photo autofocus lens is, uh, you click this video right here. I appreciate you watching. Peace.